Um, this meeting actually started with, with me just emailing with one of the residents that uh, had been complaining, and I'd been emailing with several about uh, my coming down this week and hoping we'd have an opportunity to sit down together um, and talk. And then it was suggested that we could do something here and more of you could come and we could get more done in, in an hour. So uh, I appreciate you coming. Um, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what we're doing, uh, particularly on the subjects of noise and odor, and uh, then answer what questions you have. Um, I may not, I'll say in advance, I, I may not be able to answer every question, either because I don't know the answer, uh, or um, you know, there, there have been um, suggestions that uh, this may all be heading to court at some point. So there, there are some things that I may just may not be able to talk about. But I will, I will share with you what I can. Um, as I think many of you are aware, um, but maybe not everybody, there was a report uh, issued recently by the firm of Hessler Associates, who we hired. Um, to really investigate what specific, what specifically at this facility is causing the noise that can be heard uh, in Turkey Creek that is described as a jet-like sound. Uh, I've heard it myself. You know, I've, I've been here before. So, um, and we, we didn't know the answer. So we wanted to know what's causing it and what can be done to mitigate it. And I've been wanting to actually come down here and have meetings like this for a while now. But I felt like until we didn't have answers to those rather basic questions, uh, we couldn't have a very meaningful discussion. So uh, they performed a study, and, and I did bring extra copies. Um, when you're leaving, if you don't already have one, you can, you can grab one. Um, and basically, what he determined was it's um, stack noise. Usually at power plants, stack noise is caused by uh, a fan. What gets the air circulating and up out of the stack is a, is a very powerful fan. Uh, but the sound reading measurements that he was taking in Turkey Creek did not correspond to a fan frequency. So instead, he determined that it was actually uh, just the, the rush of the airflow itself creating turbulence in the air. And that's uh, and it's somewhat unusual in that usually with most noises, it's loudest at the source and diminishes with distance. Uh, and this is not true of this particular noise. It's actually you, you, you hear it less at the facility and you can hear it more uh, typically downwind of the facility. And so if you're noticing a lot of variability of, gee, one night I don't hear it, the next night I really hear it a lot, um, it isn't usually the case that it's a case of we're not running one night and we are running the next night. We're running pretty continuously. And so like this, this past weekend, for example, I've heard reports about that. It was really a shift in the wind direction um, that was accountable for what you heard or what you didn't hear. So um, as far as timing, um, we've issued the purchase order uh, to, uh, to do the work that um, Kessler has suggested. Uh, these are sound absorbing panels that will be installed inside of the stack, a length of 48 feet, six inches thick. And uh, he believes it's in the report and, I, and I've spoken to him as well. He, he believes it's gonna be very effective. It's gonna significantly reduce the noise. Now, does that mean that it'll just be softer or that you'll never hear it? Which of those two? We don't know yet. We're going to have to find out. Um, so uh, th that's what we're doing. Uh, we've pushed hard on the vendor to expedite the process as much as possible. These panels are not something that is sitting on a warehouse shelf. So we can't get in, over, in here overnight. They are um, custom designed and custom built so right now, you know, as a case of their engineers and our engineering going, engineers going back and forth with drawings on the, on the design. So in terms of finalizing the design, uh, them constructing the units, getting them over to us and us installing them, uh, the schedule now is that we can receive these uh, likely sometime in the first week of December. 
and then take the plant down for a period of four or five days in the second week of December to install. I wish it were sooner, uh, but that, that is the schedule. As far as um, odor, uh, a compost-like odor, uh, you may have, have heard one of us say it or, or read it in, in something that we wrote, but um, when, when the plant was being, uh, when the plant was built and we started taking in fuel deliveries, there was a schedule about when the boiler was going to begin operation, so when the, this fuel would start to be consumed. And uh, for a variety of reasons, that, that got delayed by a period of several weeks. So as a consequence, we had a lot more fuel building up on site than would normally be the case. And some of the fuel just uh, got old. I mean, it's like any you know, wood product. If you leave it in one place long enough and, uh, and it gets wet and, and it's there for a sufficient period of time, isn't getting enough oxygen, it'll, it'll decompose and you'll get that kind of odor. So that's... That's what we've been dealing with. Um, most of that old fuel has been consumed. There is, a, there is some of it left. Um, I asked today when they thought it would all be completely gone. And what I'm hearing back is two to three weeks. Um, so that's, that's the information I wanted to share with you. And um, as I said, I'd, I'd be happy to, to take any questions you have. And I may not be able to answer them all. but. Uh, my name is Peter Perkins. I think we've yes. had on email. In fact, your email last evening to have us meet sometime it surprised me a bit. But I guess I'm the one that precipitated this meeting. I'm glad you're here. I have to ask you first were you here with the group in February 2010? That no, I, to us? I was not. Okay, can you tell me why they lied to us? Well, um, <coughs> I have heard from many of you uh, that you heard uh, a statement to the effect that you wouldn't know the plant was there. I have looked at the presentation that was given that night, and the subject of noise, for example, was not actually in the presentation. I have spoken with the people that made the presentation, and I asked if they remembered saying that, and they, they did. Um, but clearly, there are a number of people in this community that that that, that, that heard that. That's yeah. You know, that's an interesting answer you just gave. Very <laughs> well. I, I, or whatever. Uh, it doesn't hold up. We have people who have good recollections and are willing and to I'm sign wondering. affidavits and are willing to sign affidavits Absolutely. that that's what we heard. We did not imagine that we were told that. We have a list of the people that were here at the meeting and in that meeting. It wasn't in their formal presentation, but it certainly, I was the one who brought it up. Another lady reinforced it because she had been in a state where they had problems with a noisy biomass plant, and she specifically asked. And we got the answer, which you haven't seen written down. You won't even know we're there. I'm sorry, that's a lie. That's a bald faced lie. This community has been lied to once. We have trouble accepting your word or anybody from Greg's word. But we're glad you're here. I also understood you were staying at Turkey Creek. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this week I'm here until I'm leaving on Friday. When you say at, do you mean Where? physically you're located within this community? Yes, this week I am, Where? yes. Well, no, no, we don't care. <laughs> Glad to have you here. Um, I'm sorry it took you so long to get here from where we were staying. Um, so uh, I, I would like to uh, offer um, this week that I'm down here, if there's a night that you hear a noise you think is loud, you think is coming from the plant, and you're thinking, God, I, I wish I had that Mark Rogers coming down here uh, right now to hear this. Um, I, I'll give you my cell phone number and you can call me. You can call me at any hour, and I'll come. Uh, you know, I, I, I won't. Phone number. Is it possible, since you're questioning our hearing, when there is no wind on the noise level, because you say it's operating at a constant level, can you give us the operating levels 
that rectangle plan for the last 10 days? My understanding is that it has been running. I understand your understanding. I'm saying, can you give us the operating levels of that plant for the last 10 days? I can check. You're talking about capacity, aren't you? Yes. And when, when, when was it running? When was it running? I, I can tell you for sure it's been running 100% the vast bulk of that time. I talked with Ms. Hyler today. She told me that it was running 70% at night and 100% during the day. Okay, I'll check. I mean, that's what she said. We're getting conflicting stories. We really would like to see that operating log for the last 10 days. Thank you. I have another question. Yeah, give us your phone number. Yeah. <laughs> and how much at night? 70% at night? That's what I was told today. Who said that? Oh, okay. That was Ron Nelson that said okay. that's what he was told to call. <laughs> My, uh, my cell phone number is 508-237-6312. And I'll leave the ringer on, and you can call at any hour. And give me your address, and I'll, I'll come down. <coughs> yes. And I want to thank you for coming. Uh, thank you also for the email. I'm Sam Olding, by the way. You emailed me today. And thank you. I appreciate what you're doing. It is a problem, obviously. My question is that this is not the first biomass plant you people have built. Why are we having problems? Were the others as noisy? And if so, why weren't, wasn't the insulation, sound insulation put in earlier? Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, this gentleman I keep referring to, Hessler, um, is a specialist in power plant noise. It's really all he does. And he says this particular noise that we're having here is uh, quite unusual. It's not a common occurrence. Um, we were not expecting it. Is the design different? I mean, I would think a stack is a stack is a stack. <coughs> I, I, we, we don't know. So we don't know why here. Have they tried the solution somewhere else? The engineering firm that you've hired? Um, yes, there there are other uh, you industrial where, facilities that. Where this? I I don't have that information tonight, do but you, I, I can try to to get it. Do you know it. the name of the engineering firm? Well, the the name of the engineering firm is Hessler Associates. No, no, I'm talking about the ones that are building the insulation. Or the company that's building it. We're, uh, we, I know we placed an order with a company that uh, Hessler recommended. Um, I, I don't have the name of that company. So you don't know where, where this has been tried before? I personally don't okay. know. What is the timeline on completion of that? So we'll, we'll take the plant down for a period of four to five days to install that. And then resume operations. So when are they supposed to start it? So we're. What's your uh, purchase order say? So we're expecting to, to get the deliveries in the first week of December and uh, take the plant down in the second week of December. So until then, we have to listen to all this noise. Well, why? If, if, if we in the, in the greater Gainesville area do not need to purchase energy from anybody for at least another 10 years yet, why does that plan have to run at all? Why can't it be shut down until the insulation and other noise abatement products come in and we can all have some peace and quiet? That's five or six weeks yet that we've got, you know, there's no need that that plant be running. That's what I was getting at. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, we are meeting contractual obligations. We need to uh, to, to fully to, to GRU. Home. GRU doesn't need the power. Uh, actually, they do. Uh, they need it for reliability purposes. They've had some outages themselves. They've had some transmission issues, and uh, so they were, you know, they were concerned uh, the last time that we had to go down for a brief period. Well, the meetings that I was listening to, they said they could buy it from anywhere else. Right, and buy it off the grid somewhere else. Commissioners said that. So, we don't know what to believe. 
sounds like everybody's lying to us. And our property values are going down. Now that this become public, I was just on the net looking to see how our values are in here. If anybody tried to sell their house right now, they probably wouldn't get a sell. The economy's a little bit better on the housing, but if anybody's trying to sell it, I'm sorry. We're going to be forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 less on each house. And that's not a joke. Well, I can, I can answer to that. A realtor, I'm a realtor. Oh, good. A realtor Thank was you. just trying to show a house in here uh, the other day, and they stepped out of the car, heard the noise, and the people said, no. There you go. Forget it. And see, the publicity is what's killing it, too. <clears throat> Because all this is being public now, because it's, you know, with the, our county, with our city commission, with uh, GRU, all this stuff is, and the reason I have this mask, okay, this is not funny, I'm not doing this for something funny. My name is Paul Yatsko, I have histoplasmosis, I don't know if you know what that is, it's a lung disease, and I was at my doctor yesterday. <coughs> And this is not a threat, but I'm going to leave it as what you want to take. I have my total lungs and everything checked so that I know exactly where I am. And if all these micro, <coughs> micro particles do anything to me, you guys are going to get a big uh, lawsuit. And that's coming from me, not from anybody else. Because I want to live a long time. And I'm healthy right now. But they know where it is, and they'll know if there's anything different. So they asked me to wear a mask. I can't even, I have a big backyard, a huge backyard. There's four and a half villas across my backyard, so it's nice and all. I can't even go back there because I'm afraid to. Now this is scaring the hell out of me. And sir, can, can I address that point? Yes, sir. Um, this facility has the best co pollution control technology well, on the market. See it? I see dirt even in my yard. On my, I have a white back porch, and let me tell you, I never had that dirt like I have now since this thing's been operating. So we've if had that's on my back porch. If I go outside, I'm breathing that, and I can't afford to not live. We, we've. We've had an issue with the Public Works Department, which is our immediate neighbor. Yeah, right. There um, it is. And we've 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 made a lot of progress on that. In fact, like we're what? we're why in daily. Why are people giving this? Why why are we all given masks? I know what I have. That's why I'm taking care of my own. But I don't know what other people in our community have. And why should they get sick? I have such a sore throat already from this, and I know it's from this because I never get a sore throat. I'm afraid for my life. That's why I'm here right now, and I'm serious about it. So, and it's all documented with my doctor as of yesterday. So I'm just telling you now. I'd like to ask a question. Someone said that you've built other plants before, and, and I don't know that yeah. that's true. My, my information, my research says that you may have designed the Nacogdoches plant in East Texas, but it was sold to Southern Power, who then built it. That's correct. So it's my understanding that Greg has no experience building these plants. Can you answer that? Well, Greg is is not an old entity. Uh, American it was created Renewables. For, American um, Renewables. But Energy Management Inc. We did we did build a small biomass facility in New Hampshire. Uh, it was How a long time ago. Watts? It was in the early 1980s. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen? Yes. One five? Early I mean, this was early nineteen yeah, this was a long time ago. And we, we, we sold the facility. Is it still running? Um, I don't know. Were any impact studies done on noise and odor and the permitting process before you built this plant? <clears throat> you know, I don't recall seeing any. How? I don't okay, on in your in your study, your Hessler study on figure four point two three, which is a graph showing eighteen hours of monitoring sound. <clears throat> got that one here. Uh, do you do you really feel that this is substantial? Like you monitor the noise for eighteen hours. Page six.
Well, I would note that the evening that this was performed was an evening in which we received several noise complaints from Turkey Creek. The weather what, conditions. What were the weather conditions. Uh, Do you, you know the yeah. humidity, the temperature? Well, I, I know the wind. I know the wind direction. The wind direction was well, out of the was, was out of the northeast, and it was it was brisk. It was ten to twelve miles an hour, I no. believe. Is that part of a study? When you do a study like this, you do not consider the environmental conditions, the weather conditions, and is 18 hours a reasonable amount of time to do a noise study? Um, you know, I wasn't involved in, in doing the study, so um, I could put that question to, to Mr. Well, Hessler. I would think not. <laughs> I mean, I would, would, not, would and you would too. Would you have As a reasonable person who considers this a noise nuisance? <laughs> well, with reasonable sensibilities. Well, <laughs> I think that had he found no noise and we have noise complaints, that would be a cause for concern. What's the baseline? What was the noise level prior to uh, taking the survey? Are you cranking up the plant? What was it? What did we have? Twenty out here, 20 decibel evening sound level. And for every uh, five decibels, it, decibels, it increases the sound by uh, double. So if it went from 20 to 50, what is that? Um, 500, 600 percent? But somebody do the math. <laughs> I don't remember if it's, if it's this report or the earlier report, which is uh, the ECT report. But I, I know one or both of them did talk about background levels and measurements taken when the plant was not operating. And uh, there, there was... Uh, noise? Yeah. Sound? Yeah. Decibels? Yeah. Yeah, I would like to see it. Because I have not found it. And I've gone through all your reports. Um, you know, in fact, I think, I think in this report it notes that... Um, that the, the loudest noise registered was actually on a day that we were not operating. I don't know what the oh, cause of it was. When you plant down time? Yeah. Yeah, how long does it take to, uh, <clears throat> to start your plant up if it's down completely? Um, uh, I, I don't remember the exact number. It's something like 18 hours. 18 hours. Well, it said during the plant restart here, it was over a two hour period of time. On your on this study, what so it took only two hours that night to start it up. It depends if it's a cold restart or if it's a warm restart. It can it, there's a big variance oh, in how so long it, it takes. Oh, it wasn't really down. Uh, I don't. <laughs> it could be a cold uh, a warm restart, so the plant really wasn't down. Just well, if the plant is not operating, it's not operating. Whether the uh, components are okay. cold or warm. Well, I'm just reading your study here. Your information it says plant down, restart, plant full load. Okay, that's all. I'm just reading okay. That. Mark, uh, I'll, I'll ask Mr. Hessler that. Yeah. If I may, I think part of the problem here is that Hessler and, and we have asked the city, the county, correct everybody, give us a schedule, an operating schedule, when this thing is going to be running at 100%, and let us, we're willing to put in the time and money to have our own performance standards, you know, they could test it too. When Hester was here or whatever, uh, you could see the ambiguities already. We don't know at what percentage it was running. We don't know when it runs. You said that there were some people that called in. Well, last night, I can tell you, for example, I stepped in my living room again. I'm one of the first ones to complain about this. I back up on the trailer right here behind you, about 100 yards. <clears throat> and, uh, and, you know, it's louder. And the, the, the engine sounded faster than I'd ever heard it before. And uh, it really had nothing to do with decibels, but speaking of decibels, I know I, could, I had a decibel meter. I could walk out of my patio and get one thing. And it was usually two or three times what the normal was. But when I get up next to my build, to my house, that thing would spike up there ten or another 10 or 15 points. So something about the sound, and that's not the report, when it hits the building, my particular building, and there's four southerners. It, 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 that's, that's how it is at my house. Because there's always how I have four and a half houses right behind my one lot. And that just bounces off. 
So I have four bedrooms down along the other side, and I can hear it in the front bedroom. I couldn't even, you know, so why should I have to walk around my house like this to sleep? Yeah. And I'm the one that wrote down, I'm going to go to a fine motel. I'm going to send you the bill so I can sleep. I'm serious. That's how bad it is. I'd like to point is the ambiguities here are caused by lack of planning and nobody's coordinating anything. We didn't, you didn't, I don't know if Hester, they just took, it was convenient for them to come. I don't know. See, there, 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 there's nothing ever shown to me where there was a plan, you know, like I would do as a businessman. I'm going to plan this thing out and let everybody know that's what we're doing. And if you see people walking in your backyard, you, you don't shoot them or, you know, you don't shoot them the finger. I'm sorry, you just keep, you know, be nice to them because they're out there testing. But I haven't seen any signs of that. I haven't seen any signs of coordination or cooperation from Greg, GRU, and or us or anybody else. I will, one of, one of my takeaways from this meeting is to see what information we can provide to the public about our operating schedule. Like, shut it down until we're, you're ready to fix it. All. Because we're driving ourselves nuts. You know what it sounds like? If you were ever a teenager and you heard this song that is playing all the time and then you're singing it all day long, well, this thing is just bouncing in your head all day long. I don't know how y'all feel, but that's how I feel. I'd like to recognize uh, Nathan Scope, and then Frank Nosco is next. Thank you. <clears throat> Appreciate uh, you coming. I have uh, uh, a couple uh, uh, requests and then um, a couple questions. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, reiterate the request of the Turkey Creek residents uh, that the public be provided with the operator's logs the operating hours and the plant conditions of the plant that should be ready reference should Greg want to release that data. Having managed a power plant and built nuclear submarines, that data is recorded uh, hourly at a minimum, if not more frequently. Uh, so I know that they have those operator logs. I know that you have a third party ONM provider that operates the plant. Uh, so certainly NACE would have those logs. So the question that I think that each of us has is, is Greg prepared to release that data? Because otherwise there's no uh, ability to correlate what conditions the plant is operating at uh, in relation to when certain measurements were taken. So I think that's a, uh, a reasonable request in, in the interest of if Greg truly wants to be good neighbors. Because I've, I've heard the uh, repeated presentations, the glowingly optimistic presentations given by GRU and Greg, and I have not been very critical of Greg. I've been very critical of GRU and Gainesville City Commission for this $3.1 billion fiscal year responsible contract that they got us into. But again, you guys are just a beneficiary of a, of a, of a failure of a, a city commission to, to have any business acumen. Um, second request would be with respect to uh, some of the existing contracts uh, that have been redacted, uh, particularly the fuel contracts. I'd ask Greg to release those contracts unredacted in the interest of transparency. The O&M contract, I'd ask you to release the O&M contract so that the citizens of the community uh, of Turkey Creek, as well as to your customers, uh, have full transparency into a contract that's been clouded in lack of transparency. The City Commission has offered to uh, exercise this right first offer to purchase an unproven power plant absent uh, conducting uh, due diligence, and I think that we need to have full transparency. So that's incumbent upon Greg. Greg has the ability to release that data if it chooses to do so. And if we're talking about being a good neighbor, I would respectfully suggest that that would be transparency that many people are looking for. With respect to the Hessler report, I'd like to uh, draw your attention to page 8 of the report. I'm not sure uh, whether you have a technical background or, or whether uh, you're an attorney or, or just in, in the public relations field. But basically, uh, section 4 of the report is entitled Mitigation Options and discusses that uh, it appears that airflow and fan noise exiting the top of the stack is what is being heard in terms of what's been described repeatedly as gen engine noise. Um, also, Grex made that statement um, in correspondence to the county. Now, in that section, it also discusses the recommended option or the noise mitigation option, which is to add six inch thick acoustically absorbent lining in the form of curved prefabricated panels inside the stack between the breaching entrance and the CEMS ports. Don't know exactly what those are. Maybe you can elaborate exactly uh, what those are, where the stack. But uh, the, the concern uh, of the report states that, uh, quote, 
this approach appears to be on the only technically the feasible option since it would add only a minimal amount of pressure drop to the system and would not interfere significantly with the gas flow velocity of the stack exit. <coughs> An important factor with regard to air emission and dispersion. So I guess the question is, is they're limited uh, by virtue of uh, the Sultan report uh, and the stack design as to what they might uh, implement to, to fix this perceived problem, noting that uh, emissions and dispersion might be compromised as well as the operation of the plant uh, if this fix doesn't work. So, so my question is, what's the backup plan? Because what's stated here is that uh, although nebulous atmospheric conditions make it difficult to say what the exact benefit would be, the, we believe this measure will result in a significant reduction in the plant sound. Um, that's all well and good. I, I believe I'm going to win Powerball, but it, it hasn't happened. So the question is, noting that the, the consultant clearly states this appears to be the only technically feasible option, what is the backup plan? If, if you happen to know, that's, that's the one question I would present. Our, our plans right now are to implement this and monitor its performance. We do not have a plan beyond that. It's going to depend on what the performance is. And to the extent that uh, air emissions and dispersion are, are, are um, implicated by this, would it not be appropriate for Greg to, to hold its request for the air, final air permit in advance until such time as you address this issue? Well, as you noted in the report, this was a, a, one of the benefits of this mitigation is we're not expecting a negative impact on air emissions. And we're going to be held to the highest standards under Florida law on these emissions. But noting the fact that air emissions are implicated by virtue of this being the only technically feasible solution, this, in, in my professional judgment, it, it casts big question mark over you know, what happens if, if this isn't feasible. It, 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 is the stack going to have to be redesigned? I mean, you've got airflow, and basically the consultant's reports indicate that the blade pass frequency from the ID fan really isn't uh, the perceived source, it's, it's a contributing source, but uh, this whole uh, notion of this sound is dependent upon prevailing atmospheric conditions. Um, again, I, I'm hopeful that they fix the problem, but again, I'm, I'm looking ahead for the people in this room uh, that apparently can't seem to get a good night's sleep because it sounds like they've got a roaring jet engine outside. So uh, again, trying to understand it backup plan, but also to the extent that they currently have uh, an air permit pending final approval by a state agency, uh, would it not be appropriate to hold that in advance until such time as, as we get some definitization whether this solution works and does not compromise uh, air emissions pursuant to the uh, temporary construction permit that's been uh, previously issued? Whatever we do or do not do in terms of mitigating the sound issue, we're going to be required to be in compliance with air permits, the applicable air permits on this facility. And with respect to this mitigation option, I've heard um, some <coughs> numbers float around, and, uh, and I don't know if they're true, but uh, the, the parent is going to cost about half a million dollars to implement this. Who is going to ultimately bear the cost of this? Is, is this something Correct is doing on its own dollar? Or yes. Is correct, or is Correct seeing, uh, intend to seek reimbursement from GRE rate payers? No, uh, the figure you heard is, is an accurate estimate, and that's a GREC expense. We're not going to be seeking reimbursement. So unlike the rich plant water pipeline that we, we got stuck paying with, and unlike the, the change in law provision that, that our general manager entered into against the advice of our New York legal counsel, then I have your commitment that these modifications that GREC will not seek cost recovery from GRU customers or any change in law or any uh, cost uh, um, modification of the contract as a result of implementing uh, these uh, uh, acoustic baffles for the stack. Is that correct? I can answer your question without referring to those other matters because I didn't come here tonight to debate you about, about that history. But with regard to this expenditure, yes, it's a GREC expenditure and we're not seeking any reimbursement. And with respect to the fusion of dust issue that does not exist, is this GREC prepared to install barriers or what's GREC's solution on that? Because I, I noticed when they cited the plan, 
uh, again, they could have, uh, and maybe you can elaborate why Greg chose not to put the plant on the southeast corner of the leased parcel as opposed to, to you know, the wood collection facility and all that on the, on the northwest side. Um, but, you know, what is Greg's plan for addressing the, the fugitive dust uh, concerns that are also tied up with the air permit? We have um, limited and, and actually eliminated operations during certain wind conditions. We just installed um, misters, which I saw in operation today, which um, spray um, a very dispersed uh, water spray on the pile as it's being moved. And that has the effect of suspending dust as it's going into the air. And we're going to we're going to continue to to monitor it. We're in daily contact with the folks at the uh, public works facility next door, and uh, for the past week they've been reporting um, that they they've had a string of good days. They're keeping a log now. Okay. And with respect to uh, the spraying moisture on, on the wood to 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 control or, or mitigate uh, fugitive dust. Um, you know, one of the uh, issues uh, in relation to the fuel is the moisture content of the fuel. Mm -hmm. So if you spray fuel, obviously the moisture content, uh, content increases. So what effect does that have on plant performance in virtue of the feed rate? If, if you guys Our engineers say it's de minimis. The spray is um, really only, for a fairly short time, affects the surface area of, of the wood. It's not an enormous amount of moisture that it's being exposed to. It's a very, very fine spray. But it has the effect in that moment as that fuel is being moved in suspending particles. Okay. And not to, uh, to take up time, so I'm sure there's other questions. I just have one final question. Uh, in relation to the uh, uh, graph that was mentioned by a previous uh, speaker, uh, figure uh, 4.2.3, the Hessler report, that shows uh, the sound pressure levels at the property line at, at an address at Turkey Creek. Uh, with plant down, plant at restart, and plant at full load. And am uh, I might understand correctly that the sound pressure levels uh, with plant at full load are less than what the plant is when the plant's down, as this graph reports, at least in my mind, to, to uh, state uh, for Turkey Creek that the, the sound at full at least in some hours of day, and this may be with them dropping down to 70 percent. But um, it seems with the plant down, the noise levels are, are higher at the Turkey Creek location than they are when the plant's operating. And I, I just find that hard to kind of... I don't know how much of that was time of day. Obviously, the background noise is higher here um, when, you know, the, there's a lot of cars on the highway versus very little traffic. Thank you. Right, well, Frank is next, and then, and then Paul. Uh, have you ever read the construction permit or the air permit yourself? I've reviewed the documents, but I'm not going to tell you I, I went word by word by word. Because a lot of the problems that have developed here, and they're talking about placing the plan, is that except for minor references, this community doesn't exist. You were building a plant. On 441, let's see, with GRUs, Deer Haven to the, to the one side, Pine Woods to the other side, two communication towers, a boat rental place, and two warehouses. And the closest community of a thousand houses is, I mean, you have to really search between the gopher turtles and the natural wildlife, and then on the noise thing in particular matter, it says San Velasco Hammock, which is over a mile away, uh, will have no effect on it. Uh, and now I just, my next question is for kids that matter, maybe you can look it into. Uh, we have been, we had to leave our cars out. And uh, when with the moisture on the windshield, when I wiped the windshield, and, and again, the, the one car had just been unloaded from our carrier, which is an enclosed car carrier. It's an antique car. And I drove home this for the wife could see it, and I had ash on the windshield. And then I asked her if she had ash on her car, and she says, yeah. And if the scrubbers and that in your stacks are working correctly, we shouldn't be having this ash. And I think that's what this man is, is experiencing. 
so you need to be looking into that. Can, can, I, can I speak to that before you go sure. on to the next one? There is no ash emanating from our facility landing in this community. What's new then? What I'll tell you what. There I don't know the source. They disagreed about a cloud on a Saturday morning. And I drove another antique car home. And I had to clay bar it the next that afternoon because of the particulate that stuck to it. And it just happened to be somebody showed me a picture of this class. I said, you know, this all is in co coincidence. I mean, I've lived here for 15 years. I've never had these problems. And all of a sudden, got a new neighbor, and it's like he's got a bad smokestack up there. But again, if your scrubbers aren't really the scrubbers you need, you're going to get some of this byproducts and stuff. The next thing is, if you look at a map, and you start plotting where uh, Russell lives, where Jim <coughs> lives, uh, where Pete lives, possibly this man. If you plot them, they're almost in a direct line. Uh, uh, I'm going to Sims here. From your plant to these places. And that's the biggest, it's like a, a, a bowling alley. And part of it's the fairway. But again, you might find, as you, you can take a sound meter and go around the perimeter of the plant very slowly or drive around this neighborhood with a sound meter and dead quiet. Three o'clock in the morning I've done this. And then it's actually, it's like, a, uh, I can tell you where all these people live just by where we picked up the sound and it's not where we thought. And we may have to be looking at some sound walls. Uh, when you look at some of the airports in that, they've got some very sophisticated perforated sound walls that they put up in specific spots to cut down the noise and uh, from, from the jets. But, uh, you know, this is a, this is a problem. Because I've been behind your plan on this little dirt road. It's quiet over there. Now, the particulate matter, it's worse in Hague. People in Hague have a tremendous problem with it because of the prevailing winds. But we're getting it over here now also, so. Um, the, uh, so can I just, because yeah. particulate matter has come up a couple of times. So um, there are um, two different kinds of particulate matter. There's, um, there's more coarse grain, which is the fuel that has not been burned yet, that has been moving. And we, as I said, we, we have had an issue with our immediate neighbor. Um, we um, are continuing to look at that and find ways to improve it. Um, we, you know, we don't think that it's getting all the way into Turkey Creek, and I know there may be people in this room that strongly disagree with me on that, but, you know, our, our buildings next to the um, um, actual, you know, um, combustion facility um, are in between our fuel and this neighborhood if the wind was blowing in this direction. And we're not getting any of it on our building. Um, we're, we're, you know, so, but the other, the other, other kind of particulate matter is particulates that can come out of a stack as a result of combustion. Those fine particulates are the ones that are the greatest health threat because they, as you've heard described, they uh, penetrate even the lining of the lung. And what I can tell you is that the bag house we have with this facility is considered not just by us, but by the regula regulators as state of the art, the best you can get, the best performance you can get in not having particulates come out of the stack. How many people work in this plant? Approximately 50. Um, there, let me get some other people who haven't asked. Uh, Paul, All right, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's 40. Paul, 40. Paula Stammer. Thank you. Uh, I, I had a few questions. You had said that GRU has experienced some outages. Do you know when that was or for what kind of period of time? I, I don't know in a real, real granular way. Um, I, I do know that they've had issues with one or more of their other generation facilities. Um, not fundamental, not that they're going to close down, but in terms of um, them not being available um, as much. And, and there was some, some issue with transmission as well. I don't know 
They may have been temporary. You know, I, I don't GRU know. Has, without GRU has a little over 600 megawatts of capacity. And during the day, depending upon the weather, uh, the demand might go up to 350. Uh, and it could be much lower if it's not really cold or it's not really hot. I doubt that there have been that there have been more than a total time of a few hours annually when the G, the demand on GRU has been above 450 megawatts, and we've got over 600. So, and I think it, GRU, independent of Brett, has about 10 uh, facilities of different kinds. Uh, with Deerhaven being sort of the Trojan horse for, or up to now, anyway, um, because it's 220 megawatts and it's, it's provided most of the uh, capacity, the, the energy for the demand. And yes, there are other uh, smaller units that sometimes might be down or need repair or something, but those are intermediary or peaking units and are very rarely needed. So um, I know this wasn't, it's GRU that moved this forward. It's not you who said, oh, GRU needs the energy. You, you come in it from the other end. But I was just curious as to what your information was about that. Um, I have another question, and that <coughs> has to do with the air permit. Um, I know that uh, contractually, Greg is obliged, it supposedly has state-of-the-art uh, equipment and technology, and it is obliged to meet uh, certain high standards with regard to its emissions. And those standards are higher than originally agreed to because um, of the settlement it entered into, whereby it agreed to even higher standards. But the recent uh, air permit application has specifically asked that GREC be allowed to substitute the standards of its construction air permit for its final air permit. So all these higher standards are not going to be of much avail to anyone since GREC has um, assertedly sought a kind of a waiver from these standards, which impliedly means they have no intention of complying with the uh, NESAP um, standards that were imposed in January of this year. At the time that it, uh, the contract was entered into it, was known these standards were being developed, <coughs> so uh, it would have to comply with them. Uh, but can you uh, explain <coughs> any of this about um, the, requ the request of GREC to be able to substitute its construction air permit uh, instead of having to comply with the higher standards uh, once it meets um, full operational um, threshold? My understanding, and I was, I was on a conference call today on this subject with, um, you know, experts that, you know, I, I wish on this question one of them were sitting here because he could give you the real detailed answer. But what I heard him say was that um, there's going to be no change in the pollution rates associated with this and that this application was not something we initiated. It was something the Florida Department of Environmental Protection initiated to make it in compliance with new federal standards. That that's the that is the purpose of this refiling. It is not something that we sought. So you don't know anything about this um, supposed application to have the construction air permit standards be substituted for the final air permit standards? No. I'm not inventing this as part of a, a report that I think is online now and available believe will be a subject of discussion before the county commission tomorrow morning. 
or sometime tomorrow during the county commission meeting. I believe it should be in the morning. I will pose that specific question. That would be helpful. Thank you. Can I have somebody who hasn't spoken yet? And then I'm going to go to Nathan. Go ahead, Kim. Um, are all processes at the plant consistent every day, or is there a schedule where certain, like the trucks delivering wood or moving wood piles or doing certain parts of an operation at the plant happen? on scheduled days during the week, so it's not every day? Um, it's pretty, when the plant is operating normally, it's pretty much the same day in and day out. There is a, um, the wood yard itself isn't operating um, between certain hours um, at night, but, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's later at night, it's not early evening, um, but the wood yard isn't operating late at night. Okay, yes, uh, and I, I apologize that I just thought you were additional uh, <coughs> questions and, and then a clarification. Uh, first question, um, are you aware of, of any um, issues associated with the use of reclaimed water, uh, particularly in, in relation to, to uh, water having uh, small concentrations or hydrogen sulfide that you're aware of? Are you asking any issues related to our use of reclaimed water? Right. Um, we have not yet begun using the reclaimed water. Okay. Um, and then uh, secondly, um, with respect to my previous question <coughs> as to the um, decision of GRAC to locate the, the plant uh, closer to a, a large community as opposed to on the southeast corner, do, do, you, know, do you have any knowledge or, or uh, understanding as to how it was arrived to put it at the northwest corner of the property? I don't. Okay. And um, finally, um, are, are you aware of whether Rex provided any response to uh, the city of Gainesville's uh, uh, right of first offer, offer that they've uh, uh, expressed the desire to make? Um, that's a topic I, I'm not going to get into in this forum. Okay. Uh, it's just a simple yes or no that's where I responded. Um, no comment. That's, that's the same problem we can't get from our elected officials of GRU is that they don't want to be transparent. So how can you restore and build public trust if we can't answer a basic, basic yes or no question? I mean, I wasn't asking the content of, of what the correct communication was, which would be public record under Florida law. It's just, was a response made yes or no? It seems to be a very basic question. Question noted. Go ahead, sir. What's your name, sir? John Miller. Don Miller? Okay. John. John. Uh, how many trucks a day, how many trucks are be landing in here to fuel the <coughs> each day? I read somewhere that it was in the 180, 180 trucks. Um, and how many hours a day will you be receiving? It, it's a it's approximately a hundred trucks a day when the plant is running at full production, and it's um, I don't have the exact hours. It's most of the day, other than late at night. So early morning through early evening, we're we're receiving deliveries. Is this just when you receive them, or when are they going to pile up here waiting for when you? I'm almost been run over a couple times by coming flying in here at 75 miles an hour. And showering my car with my little debris out of the back of their uh, truck. I know that we are, uh, <clears throat> we've definitely made the request of these providers to have a full screen so that this material is not coming out. It's something we're continuing to monitor and try to improve upon. I will, I will just say though, to address your earlier question, um, uh, an additional piece of information. I have heard that um, the truckers tend to prefer 
avoiding deliveries at times at 441 is, is at its busiest just because you know it, it, it makes it a much lengthier uh, trip for them in terms of time. Where, are they, where do they come from? I mean, where, are they, where are these truckers located? So the, the you know, throughout different parts of Alachua County, um, <coughs> we are, so this will be a review for some of you, but maybe not others. Biomass is a very general term. Biomass just means you're burning some organic matter. Um, can mean a lot of different things in a lot of different facilities. In this specific facility, and uh, this is uh, codified, I believe, in the, in the uh, if not the permits, then the PPA, um, the power purchase agreement we have with GREC, that um, we're going to meet certain sustainability standards. What I mean by that is the, the trunk of the tree is not used at this facility. So as you know, there's an active lumber industry in this region. Um, they are going after um, primarily what comes from the trunk. What we're getting is uh, branches, bark, um, things like that, um, which are then pelletized. So it's just from different tree companies. I mean, people that cut down trees. Yeah, what was typically regarded by them as, a, as, a, as waste is what, what we're using here. We do also take in urban wood waste. However, uh, by that, let me be precise, I'm talking about results of tree trimming operations and things of that kind. We do not take any construction and demolition material. No wood that has been treated. You stay in Florida. Oh yeah, I mean this, this region of Florida. Can you expand on the region? Is it 50 mile radius, 100 mile radius, 75? I, I, I don't have that figure on the top of, top of my head. Did we finish with your questions? I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> can I ask, can I ask them why is it that the noise seems to get the loudest around 1.30, 2.30, 3.30 in the morning? Um, I can't give you a precise answer. Um, I can give you a general answer, and the general answer is the quieter everything else is, um, the more this noise is going to stand out. So the plant may well be making this exact same noise, and the wind may even be blowing in this direction at 9 o'clock in the morning but you're not going to hear it then or at 5 o'clock in the afternoon because of the traffic on 441, as an example, and other noises that are, are more prevalent when people are awake and you know, everything else is happening. Well, I have a very quiet, I live on the third fairway, the very, very back, very back of Turkey Creek. And um, this noise comes, uh, hits my bedroom windows that right there. I mean, the noise reverberates through my pillow. And it's, I can't understand how it would be coming, how the traffic would have anything to do with it. I would think the smoke, the smokestack being so tall that perhaps the noise is going up over the trees and dropping down in the fairway areas. Could that be a possibility? That is possible, yes. That's what I thought. That's what my son, who's an engineer in Austin, Texas, told me was most likely. Hmm. Go ahead, Russ. One question, uh, and it's for all everybody here, too. From my house, uh, I believe it's about a lot anywhere. But there's something over there that if I didn't know better, I swear it was turning. Because yes. the sound seems to oscillate. Mm -hmm. Gets high and then low, kind of like going away coming back. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a smokestack problem to me, which should be fairly consistent. I would think, I don't know. I mean, the wind's still blowing. But it, 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 when it does it, it's consistent for hours on end. Yes, uh, we, we have noticed the oscillations as well, I think it may be noted in, in this report. Uh, certainly one of the reports noted that. Um, I, I have noticed that as well. Um, I was here, well, I'm going to be here every night this week, but I, I was here a, a couple of nights uh, several weeks ago and coming into Turkey Creek late at night, uh, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, and walking around different parts. And I noticed a lot of variation. Um, in some areas, it was more of a steady state. Other areas, I couldn't hear it. Other areas, it was this oscillating. <coughs> So it doesn't seem like a cooling tower sometimes. sometimes they're yeah. awesome, you know? the, the, the vent's coming out of there. But that's, you don't have anything like that over there, do you? No. Well, 
we do, but but the sound again, as you as you noted, uh, that Dr. Hessler found is 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 the airflow creating a turbulence effect, and how that turbulent sound is propagated over space is highly highly variable depending on weather conditions, on topography, and it can change from you know moment to moment. Mark, uh, what other permits do you have to uh, procure to, to have the plant operating other than the air permit that was talked about earlier, the Florida Department, I mean, uh, the PF uh, protection, that one and what other permits? Um, I'm not aware of any, but mm -hmm. there, there, there could be some. I just, I don't know what they are tonight. Um, I'll find out. Okay. Have you ever seen a copy of the compliance letter for general performance standards submitted by your company and the permitting process to build a plant? I don't remember if I saw that document. And it says that uh, these will be met upon completion of, of the proposed project. And item number six, in reference to the <laughs> It says, um, in reference to sound, will not affect the ambient noise levels at the nearest residence. Okay. Uh, item number 10 on odor. It says, no objectionable odors will occur off-site. Um, what was the title of that? It's a compliance letter for general performance standards. <clears throat> Thank you. the only one from from that part of Turkey Creek that have, have complained oh, I know, have I know. noticed a cluster but I'm just, just saying <clears throat> the very people you hired didn't do you I hope they didn't charge you too much because they sure did a cheap job any other Kimberly I, uh, one more question I'm sorry. Just, could I'm you sorry. repeat your phone number one more time for those that have come in late yes if anybody missed this before um, my offer and, and I would respectfully request it be this week only, um, because sometimes I do forget and I leave my cell phone on at night uh, normally. Um, and uh, my kids' rooms are right near mine, and they'll hear it too. But this week I'm I'm here. I'm by myself. I'm in Turkey Creek, and uh, I I want to hear as much as I can, uh, both from you in this kind of conversation, but also the plant noise itself. So if you hear a noise that you think sounds like the plant noise at any hour of the night, 2 a.m., 4 a.m., doesn't matter, and you would like me to come, get, you can call me on my cell phone and, and I'll, 
I'll get your address and I'll come. My cell phone number is 508 237 6312. Now, when you say this week, uh, through Friday or through yes. Saturday? Uh, yeah, thank you for asking that. I, I'm, leaving, um, I'm leaving this area uh, Friday afternoon. Um, I, I don't want to speak for the real experts, but I think the problem with that is that the air is coming up through the stack at a very high velocity. So even if you built like a, a half circle shield on one side of the stack between here and there, um, it, it might not be that effective. Um, but but I, I'll pose the question. All right, I want to recognize anybody else who hasn't spoken. I just have one minor question. What is the stack constructed of? Yeah. It's not a, not, a, not a masonry stack, is it? No, it's, it's, it's steel. Steel. Is it possible if there's some reverberation? Yes. I noticed in the report it says where to locate the 48 feet if structurally approved, apparently has been. So what's, what's, uh, what's happening? Otherwise, within or within or within the structure of the stack that might scale. I'm not sure I understand your question. Is all, is all the noise emanating from the top of the stack, or is there a resonance in the stack itself, like a string? Because it goes up and down like a um, like a in a resonance kind of manner. The noise does normally. Over here, coming over here at 5:45 tonight, I'll walk from up down down the street here. And it was I've never heard that I don't know. I'll, I'll ask. <laughs> okay, um, Nathan and then Paula. Yes, thank you. Um, on the portion of the um, Tesla report that talks about the stack and the acoustic fix um, in the location A. Located on the drawing, do we know where the um, ID fan is located uh, within the stack there that they discuss in the report? 
The fan is not actually in the stack, it's adjacent to the stack. Okay. I, I've never seen the, the plan I'm familiar with. Uh, extensive background power generation, but uh, admittedly I've, I've not seen uh, the correct plan like others in the community, like Mr. Franklin and others that uh, get to One more 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 question yep. behind. What is the CDMS port at 160 uh, feet high? Is that some openings, ports in the stack? I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that question. Jamie, uh, continue my, my question. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. <clears throat> um, I guess there was discussion about the velocity of, of, uh, of air exiting the stack. And at that point, do we have uh, any uh, detailed uh, data that we would be willing to release as to what the design exit velocity would be versus measured exit velocity? And, and to clarify, is the exit velocity, the actual exit velocity, higher than the design velocity for the stack? I'll ask that as well. I, I don't know the answer. Thank you. Okay, follow up, Stanley. Thank you. Uh, I I uh, would appreciate it if you could talk a little bit more about um, the insulating um, the material that's being manufactured uh, in order to try to um, mitigate some of the noise. You said it was being custom made, so is it, <coughs> is it a material or a design that's ever been used before, or is it completely original or correct? No, it, it has been used before. I was asked earlier, you may recall, um, tonight if, if I could name specific facilities that have used it, and, and I can't. But I remember a discussion with Mr. Hessler talking about um, its use over the years in stacks. Custom just because every facility is different, every stack is different, um, so that we have unique specifications for this to be effective. Do you know if they've ever had to use this material for uh, a plant the size of brick? I don't know. So based on what you know about it, the material, however it's been used, um, there's a track record for um, its feasibility and its utility. Yes. understand that the problem is created by the turbulence and you are limited in what you can do as far as this insulation so that it doesn't decrease the velocity of the uh, air escaping the top. How is this going to make any difference? <coughs> well, my um, admittedly simplistic understanding of it um, is that it the, the material is both sound absorbing and designed to significantly reduce the turbulence. How it does that, I can't answer that question. Questions? Is there any other comment you'd like to make? Um, just again, I, I appreciate you all coming out tonight, and uh, I repeat my offer, um, and uh, I hope we can stay in contact. And certainly, I'll be interested in um, talking with you all after the equipment is installed and hearing from you about what you're hearing, what you're not hearing. Are we going to get an answer to these, what you wrote down tonight, though, sooner? I, yes, I, I will pose these questions um, internally and find out what information I can provide. So we can meet with you again before you leave, if we need to. Or, so, or you give them to somebody. Yeah. Here, OK, good. We'll pass them on. Is there any comfort that your organization could 
to help us with? I mean, so we would be more comfortable. What else could you do? Let's shut it down for a period of time. I mean, we've been at this thing since... The middle of August. I mean, there's no relief. I mean, what do we do? Just hang in there like that? Is that what we're expected to do? I'm going to have to wear a mask on my own property? I mean, this is we, we ridiculous. Have, we have professionals that live in here. We're not, you know, the poor people that live across the street in, in, in the trailer park, they can't, they don't have the wherewithal to speak and come and meet with you and get on the internet and do all kinds of research that have been done. But you, it isn't just this population of Turkey Creek where there's 1,080 homes and a population of over 2,000 people. You've got the trailer park across the street. You've got the Hague uh, area where there's about 55 homes. Um, you know, this, and it's, as we just said, it's, this has been going on since the middle of August. Um, we have professionals in here. It isn't just retirees. We've got people working at Shands and North Florida Regional, doctors and other allied health professionals that need their rest. I had an incident report from a medical doctor who was awoken at 3 o'clock this morning. And she said in the email to me, she called the police, she got an incident report, got the number, sent it to me. But she says, I cannot save lives if I'm not if I don't have my ability, if I've not rested, and you have to think of those consequences. And we are begging you to just shut it down so people can get their rest and save lives and, and do their jobs like they need to. You know, this is, this is unacceptable, unacceptable that you're gonna continue running until you get the silencing mechanisms in place. And here's an, unacceptable. Here's, here's another thing, we pay a lot of taxes in here to our city. Okay. And if the values go down, our city's going to suffer. Because we're probably the largest taxpayers. I, I, I could be wrong. We're the largest Some of the largest residential yeah. uh, community in the that pays the taxes to our city. And if our taxes, if our values go down, the taxes go down. So you're hurting. It's a triple, triple and trickle down situation here. Right, there's less revenue coming in, then it less gets dispersed to the municipalities, everybody suffers. Everybody has less to work with in terms of running their own municipalities. Yeah. You need to tell your owners, your partners, about different things that could happen. There's a lot of professional people in here, and, and I'm sure that a lot of them on their own will even suit you. So I'm just letting, yeah, I'm not threatening, I'm just saying. Beware of who you work with. Here. I understand. Jane, mm -hmm. um, as a realtor, and there's other realtors in this room right now, yeah, um, we were just talking, John's a realtor also, we were talking that we would, we have to disclose this. We have to disclose that this is a problem to anybody we show property to in here. And we're going to have to somehow talk with uh, Gainesville Electro, you know, our association, Gekar, about what's going on and how this is going to be resolved. Um, to save the values of our properties. That's a big issue. Yeah, there's a court decision going back to 1985. It's called Johnson v. Davis. It's a Florida case which compels realtors and sellers to disclose to prospective buyers any defects in the property, and one can certainly make it's a very small leap to go from defects in the house to defects in the neighborhood. So they have no choice but to disclose that. And, and, uh, and, and it's pretty much the habit throughout the nation that there are these seller disclosure laws. Something similar where I live. So, you know, it's... Okay, Paula? Just um, two follow-up questions with regard to the insulation material. Could you find out for us um, the name of the manufacturer and the material or gizmo that's being uh, manufactured? And also information about um, any validation studies that were done <coughs> on the material that um, provided a foundation for assuming that it would be appropriate for this problem. Yes. All right, now, before we, we disperse, we probably need to uh, figure out how Mark's going to get all these answers to all of us. And you
you have a proposal on how do we meet again, let's say, I don't know, Thursday night? Uh, what do you suggest? Um, let me um, pose the questions to the team, and I'll probably come up with something in writing, which I can email. There was a, a group that probably didn't include everybody in this room, but there was a, there was a group email we had leading up to this meeting, and I could send it to that list, and then you could further disseminate. Okay. Right. And, and I'd rather get it two or three times than not at all. So even if, because we have an email tree. Yeah. And even if Mary Brown gets it and sends it to Joe Brown, and you know, it, my point is if people get it two or three times, that's okay. It's better than not seeing it at all. If there's some duplication in some of these email trees. Okay. Are you a corporation? Are you an LLC? Or what are you? Are you a, a partnership? How many people it's, are involved in your company? I'd like to know. LL, uh, Greg, as a corporate entity, is an LLC. Okay. It's, uh, it how has... How many people are in that? Well, it, it, it has three owners. Three. Energy Management, Inc., who I work for, who has the largest stake, um, and two others, which uh, include Starwood and... Uh, and you're all out of New York, or where are you from? We're, we're out of Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Um, I, I don't actually know where Star Wars is, is headquartered, um, and Bay Corp is in uh, New Hampshire. Who's the biggest part of it? Today? Energy Management Inc., the company I work for. Are they all aware of all the problems that we're having? They are. They are aware of of the complaints that have been coming in. I'm going to be providing updates on know you know everything I experienced this is. week. I'm sorry? They know how serious everything is? They're, they're aware of, of what people are saying, what they're, what they're writing down, what they're leaving in voicemail messages. Yeah, you know, but I mean, values and noise and air pollution. Well, we, all this you know, we, kind of stuff has to be put together as a whole. So it's a big problem, is what I'm saying. You know, we, we wouldn't be doing any of this if we didn't think it was an issue. All right. Um, anybody else? Okay. Uh, okay, Pete. Mark, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for speaking with us. We want the answers to those questions, but we want the source of the answers to those questions. Good. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Not somebody's thoughts, but who's responsible for each answer, please. Thank you. And just from an expectations management standpoint, um, you, I will, I will make a prediction that you all will not be completely satisfied with every answer that you get. That's a safe assumption. <clears throat> I guess if we could get the noise shut off for you until you get this thing resolved, that would be the biggest thing. Yeah, I'm not in a position tonight to make any representations no, but about that, but I will please, present. Please, I will present that. Because that's a terrible thing to have to live under. You guys aren't here. I mean, you know, like your baby cries all night long, and you can't settle it down. And then if it be the next night, and the next night we all have children, I'm sure. So this is what we're going through, and you can't do anything about it. You can't beat the kid, or you know, or you can't shut it off. You have to love it. And we can't love this. I, I hope you read in the, in the email that, that I forwarded to you, because I, uh, I meant to include you in the initial email and I didn't, but in the email that went out this morning, there were three links to articles about the health consequences of noise. If you haven't had a chance to read them, spend some time on those, please do. I mean, everything, there, there's risks of hypertension, uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, just agitation and annoyance Employment. and higher stress will lead to, to accidents in the workplace. Um, you know, you, it, it's just, you know, people are on edge and we can't do our jobs right. I'm familiar with the literature. Okay. I didn't actually click on those links, but it's okay. something I've researched thank, quite Thank a bit. you all for coming. Thank you so much. Jane, if you remember, there was a lady that commented from A.
at the last elect, city of election meeting, she has to increase her high blood pressure medicine because of the stress. Yeah. 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 is on the other side of the highway north of here. Yeah. Or, here we are, thousand or west. Here. Yeah, here's where you are. This is the little trailer park. So here's the entrance. I saw that today. Yeah, little tiny, I don't know, 20, 25 little trailer park, trailers in there. And this is Hague up here as you're heading toward the city of Halajua. It's about a mile down the road. Not even, you know, but yeah. yeah. Where you'll see a sign that says County Road 237. Turn in there, a little Methodist church. Yeah, that's Hague. Okay. Yeah. And is, yeah. is Hague in the city of Gainesville or the city of Alachua? Uh City of Alachua. This, technically, the little mobile home park, is either in Gainesville or the uh, or, or unincorporated county. It's not in Gainesville, but Gainesville... So the limits is way down here. It's right, but but so. I asked I when I first moved up here, I asked I talked to those people and I said, Are you I asked them, I said, Are you part of the city of Alachua? And they said no, the city wouldn't wouldn't annex us because they didn't want us because we're just poor people. So we're technically still in their mailing address. Their mailing address is Gainesville. I wanted to follow up with you on yeah. that. Because I, right. yeah. the one I, I told you I went over there and asked them. And and my, my question is I didn't get around to it. Who gave you permission to build? Gainesville or Alachua? Gainesville. See, that's not true because you're in Alachua County. You are not in Gainesville. So this whole there should have been some county permits, right? Nathan? I, I, Shouldn't there have been some county permits? You, even two, this two project or three even years ago, I never window? saw nothing in the paper, on TV, or on the internet about you guys coming in. Right. Nothing. There should have been some public announcements. What there should have been public what hearings. Someone well, there, there was the meeting or, here you all are complaining about, so, you know, there, some, were, there some, weren't no meetings. As far as I'm concerned, someone being paid in the back pocket and they're moving money over to some foreign country to hold on to. But I think this is garbage. That's garbage. I shouldn't have to smell this crap, and I smell it. I shouldn't have to hear it, and I hear it. I didn't move here. I moved here because this was supposed to be the country where I could hear the birds and everything. I'm hearing this shit. I live on 106. Uh, Appreciate you uh, walking uh, nice in. Nice to meet you, Mr. Scott. Yeah. Nice to meet you. And uh, mm -hmm. again, it takes, it takes a lot of courage as to, a, come, to come down. As and, a uh, regular viewer of Gainesville City Commission meetings, um, I'm not unfamiliar with your work. <laughs> well, uh, perhaps we'll be seeing each other again in Tallahassee. But um, it's... Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't really have, uh, I've not been very publicly critical of, of your organization. I have been very critical of, of GRU management and the city commission for reasons that are public knowledge um, that's been recently reported. And I you know, wish you guys the best in, in uh, your business venture. Well, and I appreciate it. I know at the last commission meeting you, were, you had the Hessler report and you said, I remember you saying, you said, I sure hope this works. I really do. Well, I'm an aerospace engineer at the nuclear submarines, built in airplanes for Boeing. I've seen um, similar uh, baffle technology being used uh, in engine cells and, and other applications. Hopeful that it works. Um, you know, can't help but think that there's not an inherent latent design issue in the stack uh, to begin with, um, because, uh, again, having run a similar plant, not a biomass plant, but a combined cycle, you know, a cogeneration plant, um, you know, smaller megawatt, but you know, same combustion technology, fluid I've been, uh, I've heard a um, plant make those type of noises, um, so obviously there's an issue that you guys are aware of. And, and, uh, well, we haven't um, experienced it either, you, you probably know EMI has a long track record in building those types of facilities. Well, I mean, I think that that's in dispute also because uh, obviously they didn't build the Nagadachi's plant. But I was wondering whether I, I meant combined cycle, correct? Right. Yeah. yeah. But um, I'm, I'm talking on the on the biomass. You know, if the um, when Southern Company built it, um, pursuant to I guess your design or mm -hmm. the design, did they have to retrofit the stack to to incorporate those uh, issues, or are they just so far away from populated areas that I I've to? asked that question, and I, we have not heard of any noise complaints there, and I don't know if it's a case of how rural, the, I know the area is extremely rural, right. 
Okay. Well, maybe I'll call some of my friends at Southern Company and see whether they had to do that. But uh, I would think that that, that location is probably a lot more rural than, than this one, unfortunately. Yeah. All right. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank nice you again you. for taking time to come back. Yeah. Thank you. I realize that this isn't fun <laughs> for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, it's not fun for you either. And, you know, oh, I, I appreciate everybody coming. You guys want to well, go? Uh, I live probably Thank you, as far away as you can get. Nice I may give you a call. Because <laughs> I live, the hammock is my backyard, and I'm in the San Blasco, which is the state preserve here. And uh, like the other gentleman talking about, where it's a little more elevated. See, yeah, this all appear. This is all the San Blasco. I mean, you must have these kind of maps. I, yeah. I, I, I don't have one. Not I with give me, you. but yeah. yeah. All this is the San Blasco. I mean, we prided ourselves thinking we were so lucky. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I bought in, in recent years, to move in here, this is all. This was all wild. And then the, all this acreage was somehow given to the county, and that re was to remain wild. And so we figured, oh, we're surrounded on three sides by wild area. This is heaven. Mm -hmm. And then you. <laughs> <laughs> but I live as far back on Palmetto, and I'm not sure. Yeah, he's way back here. Yeah, yeah, here's the end. dead end on Palmetto. That's the dead end, yeah. yeah. All right, then I live right in here. Right in there, yeah. What I hear out of that plant, and when I hear it, to do this oscillation, it's like, a, do you know what a Hammond B3 organ is? Do you know what Leslie speakers are? They go around and around. It's phase shifting. So what's happening is that certain noises are happening at different distances from each other, great distances, and you're hearing this phase shift as if it's whoosh, whoosh, as if something is really moving, when in fact it's the source of the noise that's moving to cause this phase shift very aggravating. It's sort of like what happens to whales when they get beached by the U.S. Navy. It, it is, is a psychological torture um, that is, it's not the level of the sound, it's the type of the sound, square waves, yeah. spikes. Nothing to do, decibels is so misleading. Uh, decibels, well, you didn't hear me bring up decibels. Yes. Decibels, are not, decibels are not the issue, it's yeah. the quality of the Thank sound. You. That's Thank how you. you beach whales. Yeah. Not by overwhelming them. <laughs> With sound, but the quality of the sound and with their sensory. Give me one of those. That's got my uh, No, I, I just wanted to look at it real quick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is. Hopefully, we get a new set. <laughs> Pretty soon. Jenny, I have a question. I was trying to catch one of the realtors. If indeed they resolve the issue of the noise, which I hope they do, then do they still disclose if you have to sell your property? No, I don't think so. I think the noise issue, and, and hopefully there's not particulates, because we're still concerned. Who decides? The prevailing literature is that biomass has still got some toxicity to it in terms of the nanoparticulates. But as to the noise, if that issue were resolved, I, I would think the, the who decides would not have to disclose. Who decides if it's resolved? I don't know. Well, Chris Bird has the answer. Yeah, Chris Bird. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, you know, I, I still okay. think that biomass, uh, is a bad idea. I've been an environmentalist since 1970. I participated in the first birthday. I want us to get off of coal. I just don't think biomass is the way to go. This is the sunshine state. There should be solar panels everywhere. Oh, 